Let's go back now to the uh, new definition of extremism in the UK. The Community Secretary, Michael Gove, says it will allow the government to reinvestigate a number of uh, groups, but it has been uh, criticised by others. Let's speak to Zara Mohammed, the Secretary General of the Muslim Council of Britain. Uh, good evening. Thank you very much for being with us. Just first of all, what do you make of what Michael Gove had to say today? So for the Muslim community groups that we represent, they've been highly concerned and very worried about Michael Gove's announcements. We've been drip fed that this um, new definition was coming out and we were actually you know, alleged to be part of that list, which was deeply troubling. Um, but I think people are quite concerned as to the implications, the fact that it's not a statutory definition and there's already protections in law and policing, but this is something that the government gets to deem who is branded with such a label and the implications for that. So people are quite concerned and quite distressed. And the other point that I would make is community groups feel that Michael Gove and the government is playing politics with extremism, with a general election just around the corner and the timing of this on the back of, you know, alleged um, Islamophobia and, you know, Dan Abbott, you know, being told by a top Conservative Party donor that she should be shot. Um, there's questions around extremism even within the party and whether the definition would also cover that. Yeah, I mean, do you, do you have sympathy, though, with what Michael Gove is intending to do to marginalise these, you know, groups that promote violence or, you know, intolerant ideologies? I think it's very important to say that we're all against extremism and it's absolutely imperative that we do tackle it in our society. Um, but as the Archbishop of Canterbury and of York aptly put it, that that can only best be achieved when we actually consult and work with groups rather than what feels like demonizing and targeting certain groups and what we would say Muslim community groups and Palestinian advocacy groups. So whilst it may be well-meaning, of course, we all want a Britain that is safe and secure, the approach to which we've gotten here, the way this definition has been laid out, the fact that it's the government that gets to choose, the recourse to challenging it, but also the idea that you could be essentially cancelling um, organisations at a grassroots level out from public life is, is deeply troubling and worrying, I guess, for lots of bodies across civil society. Yeah. Now, you made the point at the beginning. I mean, I, mean, I should say the government has already in a sense, restricted contact with your organisation, um, not least, you know, through the Ministry of Defence. Do you think you could be on the list or groups affiliated, you know, under you could be on the list? So for, if I'm, I'm very honest with you, as the leader and the, you know, Secretary General of this organisation, it has been deeply distressing for the past few days to be told that we may have been on this list. My background is in international human rights law and to be even considered the label of extremism um, was, was so disturbing and so upsetting. And to help you know, viewers know that the Muslim Council of Britain has been around for 26 years. We've been challenging and combating inequalities, working with interfaith groups and hopefully working to build a society that serves everyone in Britain, just like we challenged and worked hard with COVID hit. So to be deemed as one of those who may have been on this list and in a future list is just awful and would really tear at the social fabric of our communities and in some ways really alerts to the danger of such an approach that the government is taking. But as I have said across my interviews today, I think the government needs to look inward and really look at the projections of extremism we're seeing from the party. That's not to say that Conservatives are extreme, but what we're really seeing is this very far-right rhetoric that's very divisive and peddling awful types of tropes, racism and Islamophobia that needs to now really be addressed. Right, I mean, Zara, I mean, I was reading that, you know, the original problem goes back to, or, you know, partly goes back to 2008-9, that was a Labour government then, um, when a previous leader seemed to advocate attacks on the Royal Navy if it tried to stop weapons reaching Hamas. Now, my question, that was a long time ago, my question is, what would you say to those making a decision about who's going to be on the list about that then? So I would say it's been 14 years. The organisation came out very clearly that we didn't endorse any such position, nor do we endorse that now. You know, I think I was maybe 17 years old at the time. 
Um, for how long do we put um, such attributions to organisations? And there's probably countless organisations, the government itself, that can really answer for the things that it says and does. We represent diverse cross-section of views in British Muslim communities, but ultimately we are the largest umbrella body. So I would ask the question to the government, if you aren't talking to us, then who are you talking to? Uh, given the pronouncements of Islamophobia, and the disengagement from Muslim communities, that really is something that now needs to be tackled. Um, but I'd always be open to a conversation because that's the best way to get things done and truly really tackle some of the hatred and division in our society, not cancelling groups out. I'm not really sure how much that would be achieved. Right, and just finally, there is this you know, idea of um, legal review. If one of the organisations affiliated to you um, or yourselves were on this list, would you use that? Would you go to legal review? And I know, you know, you, you don't expect to be, but if any affiliated organisation is, would you use that legal review or would you, um, you know, fight this politically, firstly? I mean, I think we're absolutely open to that. Obviously, it's really important that um, groups are not unfairly deemed extreme. Um, and I think that if it needs to be taken to the courts, then that's absolutely what it needs to do. Um, but I guess it's also really sad and disappointing that that's the kind of way it has to go, particularly as this is not a statutory definition and in some ways um, just opens up to more trouble and division. But yes, we would be open to doing that if it deemed um, suitable and appropriate to do so. OK, Zara Mohammed, appreciate your time. Thank you very much uh, uh, for coming on and discussing that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, there has been a spike in anti-Semitic attacks across Europe since October the 7th and the ensuing war in Gaza, not least in Belgium, which houses Europe's largest Hasidic Jewish population. Some in Antwerp's 